your book was published and is available on Amazon actually January of this year. It has over 140 views and of course, as you know, has surpassed J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter books in the sword and sorcery category at Amazon. What do you think it is about the main character, Alex, that people find so relatable? Well, I think they are connecting to the point that not only is she just a female character for, for young girls to look up to, mm -hmm. it's actually, it wasn't done to be cliche or to, uh, to, to pander to females. It was actually, you know, I'm a father of two daughters, mm -hmm. and it was both my daughters combined into one character, mm -hmm. and I wanted to give them someone that's very much like them to mm -hmm. admire and look up to, and I think a lot of folks are, are responding and connecting to that. Um, not to downplay the importance of inspiring young, young men and young young boys, right. but, you know, as a male myself, growing up, I have Superman, Spider-Man, all mm -hmm. these heroes, Iron Man, there's one mm -hmm. common thing, it's man, mm -hmm. and even in, like, the Avengers, the female characters are always secondary, you know, they're more of an afterthought mm -hmm. than the main one charging in, taking charge, mm -hmm. uh, accomplishing great things, and I mm -hmm. think a lot of people are responding well, because not only is Alex a character that um, she's kind of leading the way, very independent, doing her, her, her thing to contribute to the, the events of the story. Yeah. Um, it's just ringing true because it doesn't matter whether she was a boy or a girl. It, mm -hmm. The gender was, was irrelevant because either whether you're male or female, you can accomplish those great things just like Alex did in the so story. So tell me, what has yeah. it been like for you to receive this recognition? How do you feel? Uh, it's, every day it's, 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 it's a little hectic. hectic. Um, my old hometown in central Louisiana uh, has been contacting me. Uh, I'm making a special wow. visit uh, at, at the end of March there. And it's kind of getting the red. Yeah, so I'm like a hometown hero. I'm going back home to get the kind of the red carpet treatment. It's very overwhelming. Um, every day I'm gaining new fans. And to me, the, the best moment so far has been uh, from Canada, there was an 11-year-old girl that met, that contacted me through Facebook and asked if I was an author. Mm -hmm. And through our conversation, I, you know, I asked her how she what she thought of the book, what her favorite characters were, her favorite mm -hmm. scene. Mm -hmm. And when she had told me in our conversation that she's an avid reader, reads 20 books a week, which I don't know how wow. kids have the time. But she had told me that she just finished the entire Percy Jackson series and that my book was the best book she's ever read. Wow. And it just... It just floored me because that's exactly the kind of impact I was hoping for. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, I asked her immediately, you know, is your parents, you know, with you? Because, you know, obviously young people on the Internet, you have to be kind of conscious of that. Right. And I, I work exactly. in cybersecurity, so I'm very conscious of these matters. And she said her mom was right next to her as she was mm -hmm. chatting with me. I said, okay, good. Then she asked if she, she saw some pictures online of different people around the world holding up mm -hmm. the series logo flyer. And she asked if she could take one. I said, by all means, take one. And, of course, that's been posted on my Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the response has been really overwhelming. Wow, okay. Now, I read actually and saw on your website that you're currently working on three other installments to go along with this book. When can readers actually expect those books to be out? Well, book two is going to be completed right now, April of this year. Um, the only reason why I'm hesitating on self-publishing again is because my, my hope is that uh, I'm, I actually have a booth reserved at the London Book Fair in April. Mm -hmm. And my hope and wish is that I could find either a literary agent or, or a publisher like Simon & Schuster or Scholastic. Because, quite honestly, I, I, I do work for the military where I do cybersecurity work. And, the, you know, both these worlds, both the cybersecurity world and the book writing world, which I'm very new to the book writing world, mm -hmm. it's very demanding of your time. And I wish I can engage the fans more. But almost every day I have people reaching out to me and I try my best to, you know, respond. And it's one of those where I, I think eventually having a, a publisher or a company that mm -hmm. can help me with the PR, the marketing, and right. just responding to fans would be very beneficial to me. Um, so my hope is that, that book two may may be delayed because a publisher would want to uh, publish it first time with them. But if, um, okay. if things don't work out well at London Book Fair, uh, the book will be published uh, no later than May. Okay, okay. Now and then the other books will follow shortly after. Okay.
Okay. Now, of course, you just spoke of marketing and PR. What was your strategy behind when you first sat down and decided, not only am I going to write this book, but I'm going to self-publish it as well? Yeah, so um, I did what most book writers do. I, 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 as, a, as a computer guy, mm -hmm. I did. You know, I Googled you know, how to write a book, how to self-publish. I, I, you know, I did a lot of my legwork and research. And, of course, a lot of sites will tell you you have to find an agent, you have to send out your manuscripts to all the different publishing houses. And so I did the whole, um, you know, I must have sent over a 1,000 emails to all these different publishers and agents. And ultimately, in the end, I had 11 publishers come back to me uh, with contract offers for the book. And wow. none of their contracts seemed to have the thing I was looking for, which is um, – you know, a strong marketing team because these were small press houses and they all were offering to Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com. They were all offering to dot coms, which was something I felt, well, I could do that on my own. Okay. And that's what made me decide to self-publish. The second goal of the marketing behind it, you know, I had to think of what are the concepts in my book that I wanted to represent, not only for the children, that that's my intended audience, but right. obviously children of that age group don't have, you know, credit cards, debit cards, and Amazon accounts. Mm -hmm. So I had to think of how do I get the interest of a parent, of a grandmother, of an aunt, okay. someone that's going to be the, the, the person that actually buys it for their young ones? Okay. And so I came up with the what is the missing variable concept, which is in my book. Okay. And the missing okay. variable is, you know, we have all these problems in our real world, just right. like there's problems in the story. Mm -hmm. And so they talk about that there's an equation that there's something wrong with the equation. Similar to like when we talk about gender equality, there's, right. there's a problem with that. Right. But what we always seem to do is we start to talk about the factors of gender equality. Like we need more government focus. We need more leaders mm -hmm. uh, promoting gender equality. Right. We talk about these factors, but no one ever says, you know, what's the, miss the thing that we're missing? And this missing variable concept in my story is mm -hmm. that, that thing or person that can change it, that can change the world. And What's unique about it is that it doesn't have to be this profit, pro, a prophet or the chosen one, um, right. like Neo in the Matrix or Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. What you'll find out in the course of this series that kids will discover is that everybody and anybody can be the missing variable to make that change. Okay. And what's what's um, I guess I'll give a little hint to what book four will eventually twist all of the series around. The first three books talk about the missing variable as if there's a missing thing to fix the equation. Right. But by book four, a prominent character will tell Alex that you're not the missing variable. You should change the equation, which completely twists everything you've been led to believe that you could be that one piece of it. But then instead of trying to be a piece of the solution to the problem, change the problem altogether. Right. Okay. And so, um, though, so that's been my recent push online is, uh, you know, change the equation change the world and that's been uh, one of my main tweets lately okay so is it safe to say you just kind of gave vmh a little bit of an exclusive in terms of what yes book four actually, actually i did um that's a very prominent message in book four yeah okay all right now with that and with everything that you just mentioned you did an interview where you conducted an interview with girl talk um hq where you that's correct Yes, where you discuss your reason for writing your book, of course, as you mentioned, and why you felt it was important when it comes to girls in mathematics. Do you feel that books like yours and others can help to continue and raise awareness um, as well as have an influential, excuse me, impact on STEM programs for girls and their involvement with them? Yes, of course. Um, you know, reading is a very powerful thing because when you read, you know, a lot of us as adults, we read both for pleasure and we read both for our jobs or for our education. And one of the talks that I'm giving to the Evans uh, School in Central Louisiana uh, in March, mm -hmm. the, the theme of this talk is that books can take you places, both real and imaginary. Okay. And it's through the books that I wanted to infuse the math and to inspire and motivate the kids to, to want to study science and study math more through mm -hmm. this fantasy story because we all grew up where we said, when am I going to use this in the real world? When is this ever going to be important to me? But if I can capture them at a young age to see that to Alex these things matter, to the city of people that Alex finds herself trying to help, it matters, that way – 
as they start to see science and math, instead of being turned off by it because they don't immediately understand it, mm -hmm. they will hopefully be nudged further to, to pursue it more. Because ultimately, we need more scientists, we need more engineers, we need more doctors, and mm -hmm. why can't they be females? Right. You know, females and males, we need more of these professions because, quite honestly, you know, not every kid can be the next LeBron James or Jennifer Lawrence, whether right. movie star or sports figure, but right. they could be the next great them. Mm -hmm. My uh, colleagues will ask me, you know, when are you going to finish the rest of the books or do you think that maybe you'll stop? And I, I look at them and I tell them immediately, I said, I can't stop. I must complete this series because mm -hmm. as a parent, I can never tell my kids that they can't quit if mm -hmm. I quit. Mm -hmm. And so that's even more as a parent, the message I have to make sure I live every day for my kids, that I seize the opportunities I can. I work hard at it, stay motivated. Mm -hmm. And they see that every day. Okay. All right. Well, that definitely sounds great. With that, what would you say has been the most rewarding experience for you thus far? Really, it's when uh, a young fan uh, connects back to me, reaches out to me, tells me how they love the story. Um, you know, I get the comparisons all the time to Harry Potter, Golden Compass, mm -hmm. uh, Chronicles of Narnia, mm -hmm. all of the great young adult literature. I get the constant comparisons, which it, it's very flattering. Uh, but at the same time, I want the story to stand on its own. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the greatest feeling really is just the fact that I finished the first book and that the response is just every day. Like I said, it grows and grows. Um, every day there's new fans connecting, new fans discovering it. Right. And again, I think it's just the biggest accomplishment is to see how my daughters smile and they're excited about it. And in the end, I just hope that when I do finish this journey, wherever it will take me, that my girls get inspired to know that they can, whatever they put their mind to, they can accomplish. Whatever they stay dedicated to, they can achieve. And that's really ultimately, as a parent, as a father, that's mm -hmm. mission number one. Mm -hmm. Mission number two, to change the world, that'll come in time and hopefully with good luck and good fortune and, and hopefully a good PR and marketing team. Yeah, I would hope okay. that, if anything, yeah. there are even more books and more uh, materials for, for children, whether to get them engaged into STEM, science, technology, mm -hmm. uh, engineering, mathematics, or to, or the arts. Mm -hmm. I would hope there's even more material for young people because, um, you know, when you have a lot of material like Twilight, Hunger right. Games, I don't think the messages in those are, are more akin to what the preteens and the younger readers really need right now. And right. Um, not, to, not to slight those series, they're, they're popular. Right. And 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 mm -hmm. so forth. But I think our younger minds, they get enough from the news of you know all the terror threats we have in the world, the natural disasters. But they need mm -hmm. something hopeful and inspiring. And right. as you said, two to three years from now, I would hope I'm not the only one. I would hope that I'm just one book in a sea of books that are inspiring and motivating their minds to ask the questions, to inquire and grow their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, well, first thing is finish your book. No matter what anyone tells you, finish it. Uh, as hard as it may be, um, that is really the first major step. When you get to the end of your story, that really truly is the biggest accomplishment you can make. And I've talked to a lot of writers, uh, I've made a, a lot of writer acquaintances through this mm -hmm. progress. Mm -hmm. I've uh, so a lot of folks online and even at my work and uh, in Kuwait have uh, approached me to say, how do I get my book out there? And the first question I ask is, have you finished it yet? Mm -hmm. And most of the time is, well, I, I started, but I didn't finish. And, mm -hmm. and I can't emphasize that just to finish it mm -hmm. is the first major milestone. When you get to the end, even though you might not be happy with it, a lot of folks, mm -hmm. depending on the personality, are more critical on themselves than others. But to me, mm -hmm. Finishing it first mm -hmm. and then having like a beta reading group or having friends and family that could give you an honest critique to help mm -hmm. you, whether it's from a proofreading perspective or to say what they liked and didn't like mm -hmm. to help you improve your writing. But at the end of the day, listen to the voice inside yourself. Get your story out. Get to the DN part mm -hmm. and then publish. Amazon, uh, the uh, Kindle Direct Publishing Program is a wonderful program for just anybody that can just put a username and password in can instantly set up an account and get their book out there and let the let the public let the internet let the world judge your work and no matter good or bad or how they judge it you've accomplished something that very few people follow through with and that's the key follow through okay okay well that's definitely good advice good advice now is there anything else that you would like to add to conclude this interview 
Uh, well, thank you very much for the time you're giving me. I really mm -hmm. appreciate this opportunity to speak speak with you. Um, I guess if I had any message is that if you have a niece, a nephew, uh, or or a, a son, daughter, granddaughter, cousin, you know, any child in your life, you know, you have the opportunity to make a change. And I'm not trying to say buy my book. I'm mm -hmm. trying to say you know, support them getting into a STEM program. There are STEM programs coming up in every city, every school, and they need to be engaged with these programs because our mm -hmm. default education is nowhere near on par with the rest of the world. And we need to become more competitive. Uh, President Obama has mm -hmm. spoken to this about education. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. happy to see that there's more money being spent for like NASA and programs of this nature because we really need to have a generation of scientists because these problems that we have, these you know equations that are things wrong with our world, like world hunger, cancer, AIDS, all of these things won't be solved with dunking basketballs or performing on camera or doing a reality TV show. Yeah. It's going to take it's going to take the future generations that are scientists, mathematicians, and engineers. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to solve the big problems that we're going to face in our lifetimes. Okay. So please, motivate your kids to pursue the sciences. Mm -hmm.